Hello, Oscillator Sync here. Today we are back with the Almira 2 because the version 2.2 firmware has just been released. And this is a firmware release which has made me feel very happy because I kind of had a wish list of features for the Almira which I thought would elevate uh, what it could do in my setup at the very least. And this update has uh, added uh, all but one of those things on my wish list and the one that it's missed out is kind of a subset of another one that it has added so that's great and has added a bunch of other stuff which I didn't know that I wanted but as it turns out uh, I do. So what I thought we would do today is take a look at these new features but rather than sort of look at them in isolation uh, what I thought we'd do instead is put together a patch which just happened to make use of all of these new features or at least as many of them as it makes sense in the context of the patch I suppose. Uh, in the interest of transparency, uh, Neutral Lab sent across the Amira 2 to me for free in order to make videos on it, but they haven't asked for, nor have they been given any editorial oversight of any of the content they've made on it. And uh, frankly, I'm passionate about showing off what smaller companies are doing in terms of making cool instruments for us. So uh, let's take a look at some of these new features. Before we get into the sounds, we should probably address um, one potential downside of having a device an instrument with a limited interface where you are adding lots of new features and that is that uh, the cheat sheet for the magic codes on Elmira 2 has got quite a lot bigger and certainly probably well past the point where you can commit this uh, to memory. Uh, if you aren't aware uh, in order to access a lot of the additional features on Elmira, or to modify its default state, I should maybe say, uh, there are these magic codes where you hold down the mod P button and then you type in the numbers, assuming that this is one, two, three, and four. And this gives you access to a bunch of different stuff, including most of the new features. Yeah, this is kind of the the the, the sad reality of of adding new interesting stuff which i think is a positive thing to a synth with such a um, minimalist interface so i will be typing in a lot of these magic codes i will read them out as i do it but i won't keep flashing the cheat sheet up on the screen because uh, i don't think it particularly helps um, and you can get that from the manual anyway so we'll start with what is probably the main new feature i guess and it's actually one that doesn't require a magic code uh, which is quite nice and that is that we have a new mod mode for the voices so uh, if you're not aware each of the voices can have a bunch of different mod modes which affects what this knob actually controls so at the moment um, all the voices on the red mode uh, which is uh, a detune but we can hold down uh, one of our voices and tap the mod p uh, button here to get at different um, mod modes and what we have here on this kind of mint colored LED is a chord mode so now one voice can play um, multiple notes which expands the polyphony of the device quite a lot um, you adjust what chord is playing by using the mod control, which you could also modulate if you wanted, uh, which start from kind of more simple chords. So the fifth and octave, major and so on, minor, diminished, some sus chords, some seventh chords, minor seventh chords. Uh, these chords incidentally are just intonated uh, rather than using 12 tone equal temperament for those of you who care about those sorts of things although i don't know what just intonation uh, system is used uh, but it gives them a slightly different flavor i guess than if you were to be playing these chords on a keyboard um, so yeah this allows us to beef up the overall sound um, especially for drones, uh, quite a lot. And I thought what I would do for this patch in particular is maybe dedicate two voices to a, um, a chord mode, maybe just on the um, octave and fifths, uh, tune them differently. To make a larger chord cluster and then um, sequence the tuning uh, for these uh, so that you have maybe four chords that play 
have the sequences of different lengths, have them sort of modulate over each other to give a kind of an evolving chordal pattern based around these octaves and fifths. This actually brings me to another new feature. Uh, so at the moment, kind of the highest point of the oscillator isn't that high. And if we want to kind of put these chords a little bit over the top shimmery kind of things, that's kind of not high enough for me. And this area down here is not that useful to me. So um, one thing that was definitely on my wish list was the ability to raise the voices by an octave. And we now can do that. It's done via a magic code. Naturally, that's going to be the theme coming on here. Uh, and you, it's two, three, and then the uh, number of the voice that you want to raise up. So here is voice four. That's its current highest point. We're going to do two, three, four. That's now an octave above, and I also want this other voice to be an octave above as well. So we'll do two, three, three. And now both of these voices are an octave higher, which gives us a more usable range for the chords. So let's start by finding our sort of complementary chord tones. I guess we'll use that as our base point. Hey, why not? Let's let's have a kind of implied major tonality to this. Um, often my drone stuff is so negative and minor, or or, or worse than minor, more discordant. So maybe we'll, we'll go with that. Um, let's just find a slightly less aggressive. Um, wavetable just for the moment as well. Uh, yeah, and let's sequence just going between probably two different pitches and therefore two different chords. Uh, so let's just get this one droning and this one droning. We'll hit record for this one. We'll have a couple of steps at that pitch. One there. Couple there. Couple there, perhaps. And back there. And then on this other one. See how that sounds when we hit play. Give it a sync signal. We don't want these droning the entire time, however, um, but that is a nice place uh, for us to start. The nice thing about the sequencer on Elmira is that it's playing in the background even if they aren't. That gate's going on on the voices. So let's think about how we can trigger the 
the gates uh, automatically. And this brings me on to uh, the next big thing that has been added in terms of my uh, wish list, and that is that we now have stepped and gliding random on the two LFOs. So this is one of the things that we're going to need a magic number for, uh, and the magic number to get, um, we'll go with sample and, let's try sample and gl hold, glide, hold. Let's try sample and hold on the first uh, LFO here, and we're going to hold down mod, and we are going to go with two, four, one, one. You should see now that the light here on LFO one is doing that classic random vibe, which is just what we wanted. Now, of course, we can use the LFO here in its random mode to do all sorts of random modulation, but one of the things that is ex especially exciting to me as someone who is interested in more generative uh, techniques in music is that a stepped random source is like the building block of, uh, of generative music. And what we can do is we can use this to actually go into the gate of one of our voices. And this is going to control the volume essentially of our voice. However, at the moment, most of the voltage that's coming out of our LFO is going to be high enough to trigger the gate. So what uh, I have been doing as I've been playing with this firmware is I've actually been taking a um, just a flying attenuator and sticking it in the way of the signal. Now obviously we have the attenuators on uh, Elmira as well, but this uh, feels like a waste of this attenuator because this allows us to molt as well. So I'm just gonna stick attenuator just straight in the way here. And then I'm going to turn down my attenuator so that only some of these sounds come through. And then slow down the LFO. And by adjusting the envelope. We can have it start to self-play. Cool. And now I also want um, this other one to self-play as well. There's a couple of ways we can approach this actually. What might be worth trying is actually taking the envelope output of this voice and putting it into the gate here and setting its envelope a little bit longer and this should then have this voice follow this one however in the same way the voltage that comes out of the envelope is too high for too long so we'll stick in another flying. Oh, so that float's just too long. We'll set another flying attenuator here. voices here playing themselves just balancing the uh, envelope control on the second one to get the ramp up and sustain afterwards to fit properly
it's probably a good time to bring in the delay. Now, one of the things I said during my last video on the Almira is that the filter comes after the delay. What I meant to say is that the choke comes after the delay, which you can use as kind of a, a, a filter. Uh, but actually, the filter comes before the delay, or rather, it did on the previous version. But we can actually uh, swap the order of the routing so that it's uh, delay after The filter or delay before the filter and that's kind of relevant on Elmira because the filter is so burbly and characterful that it, you can kind of use it as more of a voice rather than as a delay now for this patch I'm not sure which way around is going to be most sensible but we can give it a try so magic code time of course and we're looking in the routing section and uh, 133 or 134 is what we're looking for, so 134 will reverse it. So now you can hear that we're actually darkening the delay signal in real time rather than putting a darker signal into it. And that's going to be on a per patch thing, which is going to make more sense. It also allows you to add resonance to the filtered signal, which is quite cool. Yeah, I quite like that with, uh, with the delay before the filter. Choke there. A bit more feedback. A bit of crackle from the choke there, lovely. So, where do we want to take this patch next? So I think maybe, uh, seeing as we were just talking about the filter, we should talk about some of the new features that have been added to the filter. So you could always change the filter mode uh, between various different resonant filter types. So you had uh, uh, the default, which is kind of a ladder filter inspired uh, design. You had uh, some other high pass, low pass, band pass as well, I think, um, sort of state variable style resonant filters. But we have on this version, added in a, a couple of two band filters essentially a high pass and a low pass kind of uh, working together so the resonance control stops being a resonance control and instead controls one of the two uh, filters so we'll just plug in our LFO again to get things playing again so uh, magic code time um, there are a few different uh, modes. You have a series high pass and low pass. You have a parallel high pass and low pass. And then you have a base width filter, which is what I love on electron devices where you have sort of a, uh, a filter that you're moving up and down and then you're changing how wide that filter works with the high pass and the low pass. And then you have a base width notch, which is the same thing in reverse, but notching out stuff. Uh, playing with uh, some stuff um, last night, I found that I really quite liked the high pass, low pass parallel mode because it gave you some interesting, almost phaser like um, sounds. So I'm going to turn that on. So that's uh, magic code. We're going to need to do uh, it's 3312, 3312. And now what you have is a high pass and a low pass filter on these two knobs so you have a high pass filter on the resonance knob and a low pass filter 
on the cutoff knob. But they're working in parallel, so you can get these really cool phaser sounds at lower down and higher up on these knobs, which I think are really, really, really pretty. And I like how you can kind of have a very dull sound and a very bright sound at once, which is what parallel filters sound like. It's no great surprise there. But I think it really suits the character of the instrument. Perhaps we should get some of these things modulating a little bit. Um, let's maybe um, take the envelope out of this voice and bring it into one of the controls here so that whenever the voice the voice triggers we can kind of get that phaser thing happening Perhaps we can molt the output of the other envelope actually and have that going into the other control, that might be cool. So I'll just use a uh, stack cable for that. So we'll just unplug that here. Bring that into here. And now along with these voices triggering, we get a lot of movement happening. It's going to put a little bit more reverb on, I think, at this stage. Nice. Right, let's get a low drone in here. So let's um, let's make use of our other LFO now. And one of the um, features that we've got in this new version is that the LFO has a bunch of new uh, wavetables for its shapes. This is on LFO 2. So there are always quite interesting uh, shapes that we had on LFO 2. Um, sort of sort of fluttery things going on there but we now have some new ones so let's maybe bring this into the wave control and just get this droning for a second let's have a listen to some of these other wave tables here and maybe just unplug the first other focus of so the ones triggering just for a second so uh, to cycle the LFOs, it's two four four, two four four. This has got some really interesting rhythmic ramp things going on that one. That's doing so much. Okay, that's cool. Uh, try two for four again.
Yep. They're so well suited to moving the wave table around. Just because they've got these lovely flutters in them. I don't want this to be quite as bright, so um, what I will do is I'll set its mod mode to the uh, low pass filter, which is the pink cutter. There we go. Plug in our LFO again. sequence to this one. So one thing you can do with the LFO now, which adds a bunch of power to LFO 1, is that once you've set something up on LFO 2, you can now, via a magic code of course, copy it into LFO 1 in its current state, so you can find a more complex set of movements in LFO 2, move it to LFO 1, and then use LFO 2 for a different set of complex movements. Because LFO 1 used to only just be able to do triangle but now it can do triangle stepped or gliding random and anything else that lfo2 can do it's just you can't modify it on the fly in the same way once you've copied it there So we've got so much going on here uh, that we don't really need the final voice in. I think we've shown most of the new features one way or another. That's quite nice with the, with the major on one of these. We can plumb in a couple of other things, uh, like let's uh, take the envelope from one, since we're not playing it, and stick it into the wave here, perhaps. We can use that as a performance control. Actually, let's send that into the multiple instead. And send each of these into the wave control of both of our chord oscillators. That'd be nice.
hope that was a uh, a pleasant walk through some of these new features with some nice ambience happening in the background. If you enjoyed the video, then as always, a uh, a like on the video and a comment down in the comment section just helps the channel out and is massively appreciated. But other than that, until next time. Take care.